need to know this. On Monday, a federal judge in Texas struck down key portions of that state's new abortion law, which is considered one of the most restrictive in the country. Among other things, the law requires that doctors obtain admitting privileges at a hospital within 30 miles of a clinic where they're providing abortion services. U.S. District Judge Lee Yackel blocked that requirement, stating that it, quote, places a substantial obstacle in the path of a woman seeking an abortion of a non-viable fetus and is thus an undue burden to her. While Monday's decision is a small victory for women's rights, rest assured that the Republican-fueled war on women is alive and well across America as there are multiple efforts underway to insert the government into women's bodies. This Tuesday, voters in Virginia will be voting for a new attorney general and will have the opportunity to vote for Republican Mark Obenshane. As a state senator in Virginia, Obenshane introduced a bill in 2009 that would have required a woman who had a miscarriage without a doctor present to report that miscarriage to the police within 24 hours or risk going to jail for a year. Obenshain is running for attorney general because Ken Cuccinelli, the previous Virginia attorney general, is now the Republican nominee for governor of Virginia. Cuccinelli himself has been at the forefront of the war on women since day one, championing legislation that would require women who are considering an abortion to be raped at gunpoint if necessary with an ultrasound wand. That's why they call Bob McDonald, his boss, Governor Ultrasound. Meanwhile, out in the Midwest, a pregnant Wisconsin woman is challenging that state's fetal protection law after she was confined in a drug treatment center despite no evidence that she was using drugs. The lawsuit filed September 30th in federal court in Milwaukee says 28-year-old Alicia Beltran was sent to a private drug treatment facility after telling medical and social workers that she had overcome a prescription painkiller addiction prior to her pregnancy. Beltran rejected suggestions by authorities that she continue taking a drug that would stop painkiller dependency. She was then arrested and taken to a drug treatment center where she was held against her will for more than two months despite passing every single drug test. Joining me now from our New York studios to talk more about Ms. Beltran's story and the escalating war on women in America is Lynn Paltrow, Executive Director of National Advocates for Pregnant Women and co-attorney for Alicia Beltran. Uh, Lynn, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. Tell us Alicia's story, please. Well, this is a woman who did everything we would hope she would do. Um, she very much wanted this pregnancy. She had previously had a problem uh, with Percocet use. She had worked to overcome that. Uh, she was using a drug that uh, pregnant women are recommended to use in helping her to do that. She was obtaining that not directly from a doctor because like many Americans, she doesn't have health insurance yet. Uh, we hope she'll be able to get it under the ACA. Uh, and when she confided that information in her, with, with her prenatal care provider, instead of congratulating her and encouraging her in her progress, she was reported to state authorities. Uh, she eventually was taken into custody by five police officers. She was put in handcuffs and eventually leg shackles. She was taken to a courtroom where a lawyer had already been appointed for her 12-week fetus. And she had to stand there before a judge without a right to counsel as it was determined that she should be locked up for 90 days in a treatment program, taking a bed away from somebody who might actually need that treatment. Wow. So. I mean, she was within the range of, of even, you know, undisputedly legal abortion, and her fetus was appointed a lawyer and she was not? Seriously? Correct. Correct. And at the point at which the state appoints a lawyer for a fertilized egg embryo or fetus, uh, any woman who might decide or need to have uh, an abortion uh, would, as she apparently was told, according to one of the affidavits on file with court, that she would now have to obtain a lawyer before she could get an abortion. I mean, the terrible thing, I mean, one of the things this case reveals is what will happen in every state if so-called personhood measures pass. Those are proposed con state constitutional amendments that would treat fertilized eggs, embryos, and fetuses as if they're entirely separate from the pregnant woman. Uh, every state has a law that allows appointment of a guardian ad litem for a child, and which would then include fertilized eggs, embryos, and fetuses. And so from the moment a woman became pregnant, she would be subject, potentially subject, to supervision, surveillance, and control by a lawyer appointed for her fertilized egg. Uh, Mark Obershane, the guy who's running for attorney general in Virginia right now, proposed back in 2009 a law that said that if a woman had a miscarriage and uh, my wife and I have been through this, uh, you know, between our first and our second child, and it's 
devastating, frankly. And uh, it, that if a woman has a miscarriage, she has to present herself to law enforcement within 24 hours, or she goes to prison for a year. What, what provokes men to write laws like this? Well, I, I, I don't know, but I think it's important to really stop, pause, and think. The uh, movement to recriminalize abortion in this country has made the claim that their goal is not to uh, attack pregnant women, that they see them as the people they're representing. Uh, they claim that we'll go back, that women won't be arrested, only the doctors will go back to 1973. But the reality is women are already being arrested in the United States of America who've suffered miscarriages and stillbirths. 15 to 20 percent of all pregnancies end in miscarriages and stillbirths. We often don't provide uh, those families with the support they need. Uh, and, the, and what these proposed laws are doing, and the laws that are already on the books, like Wisconsin's and states that have feticide laws and um, other uh, uh, post-row anti-abortion measures, those laws are being used to justify the arrest of women uh, like uh, Melissa Rowland, who gave birth to twins when one was stillborn. She was arrested based on the claim that by delaying cesarean surgery for two weeks, she had caused that stillbirth. And she was arrested under a st uh, the Utah feticide law. Another woman went to the hospital. She didn't know why she was having vaginal bleeding. Uh, she was subjected to repeated coercive interrogations until they got her to confess that she had given birth and done something to the baby, when it turned out that this woman, pr who probably had limited education, had gone to a doctor to get the contraceptive depo Provera without realizing that she was 11 weeks pregnant. Her doctor didn't realize she was 11 weeks pregnant. Uh, she was trying to take responsibility for her reproductive life. And the result, it turns out, if that particular contraceptive is used late at uh, one year pregnant, can cause a miscarriage. She spent a year in jail on charges of murder uh, based on that experience, that effort to seek help. Women uh, should not be afraid that by being pregnant and honest, they can go to jail.